You're watching The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. Joey Badass. Yes, sir. What's peace, up, peace, son? peace. Joey came Amen. in here and went right to the books. Most guys come in here and go right for the liquor. <laughs> Joey went for the bookshelf. That's yeah, right. Man, I was looking at you guys' book collection. We have a library in here. Yeah. Taking, taking this one, Conversations with God. I think it's mm -hmm. going to do me some justice. You read heavy? Yeah, I do. I like reading a lot. What you read right now? You said Marcus Garvey, right? Yeah, philosophy and opinions of Marcus Garvey. So you like like self help books and yes, sir, history. self help motivation books. You know, yeah, history, especially my history. Dope. Yeah, I love autobiographies too and school. biographies. Yeah, the Those autobiography of Malcolm X. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. by Alex Haley. Well, congratulations on, this, on the success so far of the new single, Devastated. I really like that song. It's a very hopeful song for people. Yeah. Joey sold out, man. <laughs> saw... That's what they're saying, right? That's what they're saying. <laughs> no, but... Listen, listen, listen. Yeah. I saw Joey outside maybe a couple months ago doing a program director meeting. And I said, what the hell is Joey Badass doing here? I said, Joey about to sell radio out. A few months later, devastated all over the radio. But it's a great song is a great song, and I think it's good for people that, you know, have been through a lot of stuff, and they can see, you know, clearly you have. Yeah, you know, I mean. To come through. Hey, I, I hate always to tell people, you, man. What's that? Yeah, all the gum. Damn, all right. <laughs> all right, I actually thought about that before. You know what, man? It's the morning. My breath might be hot. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, when I made that song, Devastated, I just had one mission in mind. Like, I wasn't even trying to make a hit song. You know, I was just like, I want to make an uplifting song because a lot of my catalog is really like meditative, thought-provoking type of music or yeah. really aggressive rap style stuff. So I was like, yo, I'm going to challenge myself today. I told my producers, yo, let's make something uplifting and let's speed the tempo up. Yeah. They started making the beat. First thing that came to me was internet devastated, and then the rest was history. You yeah, it don't saying? sound like a reach. Like you know, what I'm saying I hit on the radio, it still Yo, sound like you. Honestly, I was just having fun in the booth. Like I didn't even write that song. Not saying somebody wrote for me. I just freestyled it. You know uh, what I'm saying? Cool. Like it was just a vibe. I went in that booth and I just blacked out and I came out and it was a song. You know? Were you surprised at the success? Cause you don't ever hear Joey Badass music. I mean, I'm, when they sent it to me, I'm like. Well, you know, I can't play Joey Badass in the morning. It's just too usually yeah. <laughs> street or too... Well, you could. You guys just choose not to. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You can play whatever you want. That's a that fact. fact. Charlamagne <laughs> knows. <laughs> but now with this record, was you surprised at the success and how, how well it did and how well it caught on so fast? I mean, you know, so the first time I made the record, you know, I had a couple people in the studio, but they was in the other room. So as soon as I laid it down, we, like, gave it a little mix. My homies came in the room and it was like, oh, yeah, you got one, bro. And when he said that, my homie D, I was like, yeah, you think so? I was like, all right. I didn't really think about it like that. But when I debuted it for the first time at Coachella mm -hmm. and I seen how crazy that crowd went, I was like, wow, I really do have one. Like, it was the first time I performed it. Nobody even heard it before. And by the time the second hook came around, everybody in the crowd was screaming the words to the hook. Right. Like, they knew it. So it was just like, wow, I really and, got one. It's catchy. And you directed the video yep. also? That's yeah, great. me and my man Show Me. Shout out to Show Me. Mm -hmm. Now I know you have a background in acting. Yeah. You know, and clearly we know you've been on, on uh, Mr. Robot. Yeah. How is that for you? I feel like acting is such a scary thing. Damn, I, Joey, you just selling all the way out. You acting? Nah, man. Man. We <laughs> selling. <laughs> it, we <laughs> selling out every seat at the shows. That's what we doing. <laughs> but um, yeah, I do have a background in acting. I actually went to high school for screen theater, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, when I got to like high school, I really wanted to pursue my acting career, but. That's when I met all the guys from my crew, like Steve, CJ, Nick. And that's when we just linked up on music. And I just realized, you know, music is my calling for right now. But I always looked at it like if I pursue music and it became successful, I could use it as leverage in the future for acting. And here I am. Do you see how your your your, your fans don't want you to grow? Like they like yeah. they like you when you're underground. As soon as you start getting <laughs> radio play and popping up on TV. Yeah. You know, fans are very fickle. You know, it's like they just want to keep you for themselves. Yeah. It's like I... You know, at a point in life, I was one of those type of fans. Like, yo, I knew about this artist first. Like, nah, everybody finding out about him, I don't care about him no more. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But you, you just got to grow past it and just be happy for your favorite artist. Like, you know, at the end of the day, artists, they all want to grow and they want to expand and they want to be heard. We don't do this just so it could be heard by a little small community of people. At least not me. Like, when I'm doing something, I do it to the fullest capacity, mm -hmm. the fullest potential. Like, I want to be... One of the greatest artists of all time. I don't just rap to be an underground rapper. I rap because I want to be one of the biggest, one of the greatest ever, one of the greatest influences in the world when it comes to music. You know what I'm saying? Right. So 
that's my mission. That's my goal. And you need hit records. What does this right, mean? Right, Envy? For, absolutely. What does this you know mean for saying? the new album? Um, well, that's I'm very. Future. Is a song with features, song with Young Thug? No, I'm just kidding. There's actually no features on it right now. <laughs> He's like, you went in. No, you really went all the way left on us. Nah, 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 nah. Um, this new album is well. What new album? I, I figured it has to know be what a saying? new we, album. We, we kind of, you started talking album. about it. I don't know what you're talking about. You got, you see, that's what y'all do. Y'all love people. <laughs> know what I'm saying? Ain't even no new album. I ain't working on nothing. I'm just acting right now, working on my next movie. You know what I'm saying? That's it. <laughs> I heard you declined the deal from Rock Nation. Um, I think we, didn't we speak about that last time? I don't remember. I don't know. That's you like never remember. Yeah, that's, that's like yeah, I think you did. Mm, I wouldn't say I declined. You know, um, when, back when I was 17, I was on the Smokers Cup tour with Juicy J and flew me back out to New York to take a meeting with him and it was just it was a, a a really inspiring moment for me you know he told me about my song waves and how much like he thought that was so hip-hop and like how it's for this generation and how it's music and it just truly inspired me and, yeah you know we briefly talked about the like you know the signing stuff the record label stuff but it just like never happened mm -hmm. would and, you do it now um I, I don't I don't I don't know. I don't think I'm really in a position to say. Like everything right. is going so well for me right now. Like I'm I'm straight. I think everybody know that, you know what I'm saying? No disrespect to anybody. You know, I would appreciate any help that I could get. DJ Envy and Charlemagne and everybody, you know what I'm saying? But um yeah, I, I mean I I'm really I'm I like where I'm at right now. Are you, you a know? big Seinfeld fan now after having to watch the first season? No, I'm not. I'm still I honest. love Seinfeld. <laughs> You're not a fan after watching it? Yeah, it's it's cool. It's dope. It's just that, like, you know, being a young black kid growing up, that just wasn't my sitcom of choice. Why'd right. you have to watch it? Uh, for Mr. Robot. Oh, His yeah. Loves got you, got you, got you, got you. Yeah, my character loves Seinfeld. Oh, I thought that was just acting. Nah, I it was cool. It was pretty funny. I, I mean, just... I, I feel like I don't necessarily relate to it, but I still feel like it's a funny show. No, it is funny. It is funny. It's I just random. totally no missed out. Yeah, I was, I, I, I exactly. Mean, Martin, yeah, it's not Martin. I was, I was, I was you see, world, we not... was too busy watching Cosby <laughs> Show, Martin, Fresh Prince of Bel Air. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah, I ain't never surprised the president's daughter loves your music? No. And it's in music now? Why? <laughs> nah. Especially now, we see oh, her twerking that, and yeah. smoking weed yeah. or something. Allegedly. I mean, you know, Malay Obama, she's a lady of color, but even if it was, you know, George Bush's daughter, I still wouldn't be surprised if she loved my music. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? White people actually really love my music. You said white people love my music. <laughs> Has she ever reached out? Who? Malay Obama. Mm, nah, not directly to me. Nah, no. Nah, you can't nah. even talk to her though, cause they'll shut it down. The Secret Service. Is I mean, the bad if something if something did happen, I wouldn't even talk about <laughs> yeah, it. So you know, <laughs> did they press you a little bit? Like, who is this Joy Badass? Guy? I mean, they did a lot of things. They did a couple things. You know, I felt the clicks in my phone and all that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They cut down was, a tree. In they front cut of your down house. this tree in front of my crib so they could take better photos. You know, what? the feds and all that, man. It's, it's crazy not a right game. now. They Seriously? listening right now, man. Hey, Charlamagne, you the feds, man. I am. Yeah, see, you can't I, beat them, Joy. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they really cut down a tree in front of your house? Hey, man, allegedly, I, I think so, man. My, I mean, my my third eye is very overreactive, so it could just be me being but paranoid. You, I mean, I don't see the no, problem. No. She's a young girl. She listens to hip hop. Like yeah. I didn't see the big deal. Like and I was me, all on I'm TMZ. Just, I'm like. But the problem is I'm a young messiah. I'm a revolution, revolutionary leader with that mindset. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. I heard the Secret Service said you got to change the direction of your music and make it more. Um, That's why I did that. That's why I used to do You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Are you surprised to see so many white people at your show? I think I went to your show uh, 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 maybe a couple of years ago. And it was majority of white people. Yeah. Uh, did that surprise you at all? You know what I started realizing? Them white people, they can afford them tickets. They go to those festivals. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And I really started... Keeping that in mind now for all my upcoming shows and tours, I'm really trying to lower the ticket price because right. I've never really thought about it like that. Like, yo, low-income kids can't afford these tickets. They can't go to Coachella. Right. Mm -hmm. They can't afford to drop $25, $30 on a weekend just for a mm -hmm. show. You they know what I'm saying? They, they got to eat. They got to do all types like, yeah. of things. Sometimes the shows might be way far from their neighborhood. You know, so I'm taking all those things into consideration now. But, nah, I'm not, I'm not surprised to see white people at the shows. They're in love with the culture. They're in love with the music, you know? If anything, I'm surprised I don't see as much black people at my shows. Can't but like I it. said, that's one of the factors right there, you know? That's so funny, because when I used to work with Wu-Tang, I remember there was a shift in their audience. Be, uh, they went on tour with Rage Against the Machine, and then after that, it was really a lot of white people at all their shows. And they right. were like, where's all the black people? Yeah. But the truth of the matter is, when you do do a lot of those stadium and those tours and everything, yeah. those are the people that go, because, right. yeah. Especially festivals, being like a festival mm -hmm. artist, and you're in like, you know, West Bubble, wherever. And you know, it's just, 
those the people that come out to the forest and you know do psychedelics and watch you perform. Now, and you're you... doing a tour with Schoolboy Q now, right? Yes, I am. Yeah. The Blank Face tour. Shout out to Schoolboy Q. Shout out to all the TDE homies. That's hey, a man. nice matchup. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Right. Yeah. It's the best tour you gonna catch this fall, man. So make sure y'all cop y'all tickets right now, man. We are gonna shut that hey, down. Affordable. How hard is it to get ready to play? <laughs> oh, you see, this is not my tour, so you know what I'm saying. I ain't set the ticket sales on this one. So oh my, you know, you know what I'm saying. Come out to support if you can. Let's do a free show every night. And then you be all right. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure, definitely. I mean, I was doing the the, the free shows all over the city like two days ago, right. premiering my devastated uh, video and whatnot. You guys might have missed it because that was nice. Did you um have any great interactions? Anything crazy happen with the fans as you were on the bus? Um, well, yeah, some fans followed us to every location. You know, it was just it was a lot of love, and I just performed on top of the bus on different streets and then people were just shutting traffic down, you know what I'm saying? Even the police was letting us rock at certain points, certain That's locations. Nice. So it was really dope. I'm I meant to ask, growing up as a kid, how were you grow how were you raised as a kid? Because you grew up in the same neighborhood as Bobby Schmurder and G S nine. Yeah. And obviously they went one way and you went another way. Yeah. Well how was the differences of how you were raised? Because it was still Brooklyn. So, you know, the thing with me is I lived in Flatbush. Mm -hmm. My like basically my whole my teenage years, my child, my childhood years, but I grew up in Best Star. Mm. Like Best Star was my hood. Like that was my neighborhood. That's where I walked around. That's where all my friends was at. I just lived in Flatbush. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, for me growing up, it's like I always I was never a follower. Mm. For one, you know, I was always a leader. I was like that kid. I was in the smartest class, but I wore the coolest clothes. So like I got the girls. I was the cool kid, plus I was cool with the nerds. I was like the kid who <laughs> I could be, I could sit at any lunch table. Mm -hmm. Right. I was a lunch table hopper, you know what I'm saying? I could sit anywhere, people would just, you know, uh, accept my presence and, and whatnot. I was just always that neutral kid, like, it's cool with the, with the, with the little gangsters, you know what I'm saying? With the little nerds, with all the little shorties, right. and I just always grew up, with, you know, like a, a, a solid head on my shoulders, thanks to my mom and my dad. You know, they always kept me in line. I never had to, you know, succumb or, or like, you know go down a negative path, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I mean, you know, I, I came up, it was low income living, you know, my mom was struggling, my mom worked two jobs. Mm -hmm. When that recession hit, you know what I'm saying, they started locking our doors up, coming home from school, not being able to get in my crib, you know what I'm saying, real devastation, real devastation. You still got that hood in you, though, you punched the camera, man, outside MSG. <laughs> I mean, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I forgot what was that. Kanye called Shrug. You, he called you ASAP Rocky or something, right? Yeah, he did something, something like that. He was just trolling me. <laughs> yeah, I dug up some old <laughs> acting clips me. of you too. I seen on Rolling Stones. Oh yeah, I'm mad they did that. <laughs> <laughs> I was they like, brought what is the this ninth play? grade Joey. Yeah, man, that's crazy. I want to talk about that. <laughs> what, 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 what was the role? Rock soup? Um, nah, soup? I don't you know what it was. It was. It was. But it's nothing wrong. It's your past. I mean, we all have embarrassing things. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, know, I ain't like, tripping. I, ain't I was tripping. in a lot of school plays when I was young too. So I was in Alice in Wonderland too. Word, word. I was Alice after she shrunk when she. Ate I was her. one of the Tweedles, the Tweedle Jumps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Twenty five <laughs> and stuff. Listen, when you when you punched the cameraman, why was him calling you ASAP such an insult? Nah, that wasn't the insult. What was the insult was that everybody was like, Joey, 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 and then he came in my face. <laughs> like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? He was trolling me. I was like, yo, bro, stop playing. I'll smack the out of you, you know what I'm saying? And he was like, what are you going to do now? You hit me in the back of my head. So I was like, oh, word? Like, it was just a snap. Like, I didn't even think about nothing after right. that. I'm surprised like, he didn't try to sue you. Hey, I'm surprised. Hit Joey. That's true, but yeah, that exactly. He hit me first. Now, you know what? With your man, with your man passing, how did that affect how your career went as far as rapping and everything? It affected everything, you know, because Capital Steez for Pro Era, you know, he was the architect. Mm -hmm. I say it like this: every group, every community of friends, we all have what this called conductors in life. Mm -hmm. Everybody is on like a train, right. you know what I'm saying? On a train car, Steez was our conductor. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So. We all followed him. He all paved the road and, you know what I'm saying, he paved our mindsets, like right. our ideologies and whatnot. He influenced everything. So when we lost him, it's like we really lost a part of ourselves. What you was know? so bad? What, what happened that, that made him do that? Like what got so deep? It was a lot going on, and honestly, I don't want to get into it mm -hmm. that much right now. You know what I'm saying? It's really personal to me. It's not anything I'm comfortable really speaking on, like, you know, mainstream mm -hmm. publications. But... It was just a lot, depression, you know, a lot of things that happened in his life in the past, uh, a lot of changes that was going on, like a lot of things that just 
nobody knew about. You the know reason what I'm I ask is because there's a lot of people that have friends that are going through it, and sometimes they don't want to say nothing because they feel like they don't want to put their personal life. And I feel like if like I went through a, a, a situation where I was I was effed up. And um, there's certain friends like Charlemagne who makes fun of it, but that's him. You know what I mean? What you mean I make fun of it? Let him finish. There's what you certain talking friends about? like Charlemagne that I make fun of. Think it's funny because you never think it's gonna happen. And then there's certain people. Oh yeah, that, okay. So, yeah, I don't think that you would kill yourself. Yeah, yeah, okay. Do it. Gotcha. But you don't know how hard or how deep a person's situation is. You know what right. I mean? So to talk about how it affected you and what you've seen could might you know because somebody else might have a friend the same way and be like, nah, they ain't gonna do it. And then, you never know. That's I mean, I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. That was definitely the case. Like, I would have never thought, like, he was one of the strongest people that I've known. You know what I'm saying? I would have never thought for a second that he would bring himself to do something like that. So it was really just so unbelievable when it happened. It was just like, I, I couldn't believe it. I was just at a loss for it. I was so shocked. And when he so, says like, make fun of people, he means me telling him man up. No, no, I, I know exactly what you mean. Don't no trip. I know exactly what he means. Yeah, yeah, I know you ain't making fun of the whole situation. I know what you mean. No. But, like, yeah, I would I feel you on that because I would have never thought like, mm -hmm. like I said, I was never following my life, mm -hmm. but he was the one person who I followed, gotcha. who I knew if I followed this person wouldn't lead me to no wrong. You know what I'm saying? He was one of the strongest people that I knew. So when that happened, it's just like I said, I couldn't believe it, man. Now, now I know you believe in um, like, like the law of energy because you read a lot, mm -hmm. right? And everything comes back to you, what you put out. So when Troy Ave used Capital C's passing of the diss, and then you see what happened to his man yeah. later. How did you feel about that? I mean, hey, karma is a bitch. You know what I'm saying? Karma got cuz in a big way. And I'm such at a positive point in my life right now. We never got to really discuss the negative. But, you know, it, it is what it is. Wish that man the best of luck with his situation. Right, it's still unfortunate. Yeah, it we still is it. unfortunate. You know, another mom is left without a son. So, right. like, that's, and is a black man. So, it's All nothing right. like, you know what I'm saying? I ain't. I ain't the type to breed a man while he down, mm -hmm. so I won't do that. That's Let's real. move on. You live, you, you you still live with your mom? I read that somewhere. Yeah, I do. Mom Duke, see, I'm, I'm you know you're what I'm selling saying? too much records and making too much <laughs> money there's on a, that road. There's a difference. I, mean, I don't though. care. I tell her every show. You still, you still, you still the best guy? Nah, I ain't the okay. best guy. Don't worry where I'm at. <laughs> <laughs> so you did. You bought your mom a new crib at least. Hey, don't don't worry about it, man. My mom is straight, b. My mom is good. My mom is happy. No, that's, that's okay. not a bad place to be right now, though. Nah, it's still a bad place all. to it's be. Yeah, but place. why is Joey living with his mom? Cause why he's probably not? never home. Listen, listen, listen. Me and my mom been just me and my mom since I was five years old. We got a really intimate relationship. Whoa, I whoa, actually, whoa, don't say whoa, intimate. Whoa. Don't say intimate. You know what he means. Stop it, guys. You know what he means. Stop it. You can't say intimate. What do you mean? He's talking about his mom. They're well, you don't talk about my mom. He's Great very close with his mother. Very like, close. yeah, what do you mean, bro? Oh, let me look up the definition. Charlamagne, man, you <laughs> sick. Hold on, hold on, you sick. Hold on. You sick, B. Does she still do your laundry? <laughs> you sick, B. Everybody know what I mean. No, she does not do this. Because my mom sometimes, done sometimes. my brother's laundry for My mom sometimes do my laundry. See, I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes. Like, my mom mom do my laundry. <laughs> hey, you know what I'm saying? What you mean? Hey, yo, there's some 35-year-old men out there right now still living with their moms. I'm 21, B. Let yeah, me but they rock. don't got money. They live with their mom because they okay. broke. Okay, I know. Well, then my mom lived with me in that case. You know what <laughs> I'm saying? Yeah. I'm sure it's a nice, beautiful house, and you're probably always on the road, so yeah, it's you probably know? easier. Yeah. But can you? Do you bring girls home? But it's funny because I I just had the conversation with my mom recently. Like, yo, mom, I think you know what I'm saying. I think it's time. Oh, I'm yeah. Time for mom. And she start. And she, no, no, that I'll move out. That mom, I'll I think move it's time out. to get her out. Mom, mom, you gotta get out. <laughs> Why you gotta go? I, I told her like, Ma, I think I think it's time you know I move out. I I, I do my own thing. She started crying. She was devastated. Wow. She was devastated. Wow. You know it made me so sad. You so gotta keep like, her room there and get that, your own place. So yeah. it seemed like you still there. You yeah, know? that extended you know my time for like three more years. Can you bring? <laughs> so, can you bring girls home and everything? Yeah, I could. I don't like doing it though. Like yeah, I don't like introducing new girls to my You'd be like, mom. Like my mom's in the other room. You gotta keep it. Nah, it's it, it just like nah. I don't like that. I don't she hard like on. That. She hard like, on your whole. At least I got. Money, so I could just go somewhere else. You know what I'm saying? Right. If if need be, if need be, I just I'd like, be he focused. He lived with his wife. That's why I can't go to his house. You know. <laughs> I just be focused, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> she hard on your chicks? Who? My mom? Nah, mom. nah. But he just don't want to make it seem serious. Cause once you bring a girl to meet your mom, she think it's serious. Yeah. So she's like, that's my saying. man. I've done met his mom. Yeah, I be having a maneuver like, <laughs> hold on, I'll wait here five seconds. Mom passed. All right, come on, we <laughs> so how, how'd you get the name Joey Badass? Cause your first name was was J O V. Yeah, J O V. That's the first three letters of my first name. My mm -hmm. name is Jovan, mm -hmm. and um, 
I got Joey Badass from when I used to be skater life. You know, I used to skate a lot. So one day I was coming home. It's funny because in high school, everybody used to call me Joe V for short. Because like I said, my name is Javon. But certain people used to make the mistake and be like Joey because they just say it so fast. Right, they right, thought right. it was Joey when they see me. And then one day I was skating and uh, my homie, he was like, yo, don't you just feel so badass right now? I was like, <laughs> yeah, man, I actually really do. And that moment just resonated with me so much that like at a point I came to a coming of age. And I'm like, OK, man, JLV, that was like me, 14, 15, 16. I need a new thing, a new persona. And then. I was just like Joey Badass, you know, I'm gonna make it easy for people. I ain't gonna be Joey Badass, you know, Joey Badass. And then that's just how I came. We had this white dude in here. And, huh? Yeah. Nah, yeah, actually people, a lot of people, first time they hear the name, they think it's a white dude. It's no, funny. No, there's a white dude in here named Steve. He goes, um, Joey Badass? Is he related to Boosie? Boosie Badass. <laughs> that. That's funny. That's funny. Now, now, what do you think your responsibility is as a young artist with the police killings and all the stuff that's happening in the whole Black Lives Matter movement? Because yeah. you're you a militant brother. Yeah, yes, sir. I mean, I think I hold a big responsibility. I think a lot of artists do. They just, you know, don't accept the responsibility. You know, with great power comes great responsibility. You heard it in all the Spider-Man movies. You know what it is. Mm -hmm. But um, I really think that because I have this platform and because I have this voice, that it should be utilized for positivity, it should be utilized to uplift people when I can, because I have that power. And for me, I just think it's something that I have to do. Mm -hmm. I feel like this is my sole purpose to inspire children, to inspire the world, to uplift people. And I have no problem taking on that responsibility. That's exactly what I want to do. It's what I'm here for. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm going to use my vessel to, you know, promote positivity, to promote peace, to right. promote knowledge, understanding, wisdom, love. Most importantly, is that one of the reasons you want to grow as an artist? You want to be bigger? Exactly. Bigger I, yeah, I want to expand. You know, so the whole universe can understand where I'm coming from and get my message. You know, and little Joey about, Badass and Serato, the world be I. <laughs> expanding as an, an actor also now. Mm -hmm. So do you have other things in the works besides Mr. Robot? Since that's on now. Yeah, I do. I actually, it's funny. I landed the role for the Obama movie called Barry. And then they shut you down in Secret Service? No, no, no. no. They didn't <laughs> shut me down. What, what happened? What role did you land? So I, I landed the role as uh, one of his best friends in college. So Was the it movie, Reggie? The guy who introduced him to Weed. No. Well, possibly. Yeah, yeah. But the guy who introduced him to the projects. Okay. The guy, who, the guy who showed him, like, what was really going on in America. That's mm. who I was in the movie. But because of Coachella, they were shooting the same week as Coachella. So it was either... Coachella or the Obama wow, movie. Wow, that's a huge Man, decision I, you, to I, make. I might have did the Obama movie. I might have did But you got to think about it like this. Music is my first thing. It right. is my main source of income. It is my number one but thing. But a movie on the president? No, for sure. But if I didn't do Coachella that one time, them dudes would have never let me do Coachella oh, no, you again. Gotta get that, you got you to gotta take care of the home base. They couldn't have pushed yeah. back the shooting? They Before couldn't. Joey, I, I told them I wanted another. it so bad. I wanted I it so know. bad. I'd have been like, how can we make this work? Can I film on this day? And yeah. Coachella this it's crazy because they ended up going with Cuz from um and from uh straight out of Compton, uh, who played Easy E. So shout out to homie, man. Wow. Mm. That's yeah. crazy because that movie didn't look like it was gonna be like a big theater release at first. At what, first straight out of Compton? No. Nah, Barry. Um oh, the Barry, Barry joint. movie. Right. It looked like it was going to like Lifetime or something at first. Mm. How long did it take you to make the decision? It took me like at least a week. Like I asked so many people. Like people was like, "Yo, I, I don't know, man. <laughs> you ain't never one. gonna be able know. to do a Obama movie again." I'm like, "You right, but I just don't know, man." You look like, down about it. You still look like you look I like, am. I'm devastated. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm devastated, <laughs> man. I really wanted that. <laughs> I really wanted that role, B. Like, what about directing? Are you gonna do some more directing now too? Yes, I am. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do way more. You know, it's funny. I've always been directing my videos. Oh, you I've just never properly got my credit. <laughs> this is like the first one. I was like, yo. I'm Look, I ain't playing no <laughs> games, B. You better put my name on that, you know, let people know. Mm -hmm. But, like, yeah, my Christ Conscious video, that was my direction. Uh, okay. Big Dusty, my direction. Now I to Infinity, my direction. Like me, my direction. I've been directing my videos. People just never knew about it. You just it. never titled it. As yeah, right. it just, I was just like, all right, man, you direct Being this. humble. I can take the credit. Yeah, being too humble. <laughs> now, That's yeah, you've always said you wanted to bring lyrical <laughs> hip-hop back to the forefront. Do you think it's come back? Come again? I said, you've always said you want to bring lyrical hip-hop back to the forefront. Do you think it's come back? Oh, it's come back. Absolutely. You know, with artists like myself, Kendrick Lamar, J. Cole, yep. Pusha T. Yep. You know, it's come back. You know, even you got Hove 
jumping out every now Big and Sean, then. Like everybody, like Big every, Sean, everybody for rapping. sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, everybody's rapping. And everybody, you know, is getting you know more serious about it. It's it's just a balance, man, that we got to keep in this game. Like, I'm not mad at all of the fun stuff that happens, like the club music and whatnot. We need that sometimes. We need to just not think about stuff too deep right. and just let it loose in. No, 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 no. You know what I'm saying? Just Melodic catch a vibe. Melodic mumbling is what I call it. Melodic mumbling. Mm-hmm, yeah. yeah. I mean, we don't necessarily need that all the time, but, you know, <laughs> the fun stuff, I'm not mad at it at all, like, as at least as much as I used to be. Do a lot of these artists that are coming up from New York now, because there's a whole bunch of them that are buzzing, do, like, have they reached out to you? Like who? Like Young like, M.A., she's from Brooklyn. Oh, we, um, you know, she's on the duck down, so we've been met. You know, I've okay. been connected she's with her. Like too. You I know like what's funny? Me. My mom's put me on the Young M.A. <laughs> <laughs> a long time That's ago. Funny. A long time ago, before she even got signed to duck down. She's like, yo, you should put it down with Beast Coast. I was like, I don't know if she really fit, mom, but she's dope. Mm-hmm. She's now, dope. what about Dr. Dre? I heard you were working with Dr. Dre. Nah, would you hear that? I'd love to work with Dr. Oh, Dre. Know, uh, Just put it in the universe. Put it out there. Yeah, we heard you know you're working with Dr. Dre, so yeah, Dr. Dre called in him. two years. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a good point you made about saying that you weren't, you're not as mad about uh, the melodic mumbling as you used to be. Mm. Is it because you're getting radio play now? Nah, it's not because mm-hmm. of that. It's just because I have a different understanding with like just the experience, knowledge, and just you know coming of age. Like I just get it now, man. Everybody, you know, it's just all about a balance. It's all about a balance. Plus, you, you know like some saying? of those songs too. Not you necessarily. I mean, I like a little club. bit. Yeah, I mean, when I'm in the club, for sure. Like you know, but I mean, I personally like a like a couple of Young Thug songs, Little Uzi songs, for sure. Yeah, right. I won't even lie. Like you see me on my Snapchat, probably bump into it and whatnot. Like, yeah, I know. I think it's fun. Now you got an old soul. How does it work with these young girls when you making references about Wu Tang and Mob Deep? These kids don't know nothing about that. When do I make references about Wu Tang? I'm just saying, in regular conversation, I know you might be with a girl and you might say something like, Who is Method Man? Nah. Really? (laughs) That's not in my conversation. (laughs) (laughs) Like, damn, baby. Okay, I'm going to give you an example. I got a homeboy. He was talking to this young girl. He told the girl, the girl was like, She just graduated high school, high GPA. He was like, Oh, you a regular Doogie Howser? And she was like, Who? Uh, uh, uh. You don't even know who Doogie Howser is. No. Yeah, that's always funny. <laughs> yeah. 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 He's not making those references. It's official. That's an old oh, head man. reference. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. very old head. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> he was like, I would never say that because yeah. I don't know I don't who, even that know who that is. is. <laughs> I don't know who that is. <laughs> nah, I ain't sure what's going on. You know? I don't know. We appreciate that. you joining us, ma'am. Appreciate you time, guys. Last time you was late. I know I was, yo. He was extra early yo, today. Being ask my set, people being on set every day. how much I went through this morning to make sure I got here on time. First, they told me I had to be here at 8. Yo, I, I hopped in my whip, and I was driving like a crazy man. And then I got here. It was like 8.15. I'm like, oh, man, am I late? They're like, no, it's really 9 o'clock. <laughs> That's Doogie Howser, like, man. Whatever. That used to be yeah, a big see, sitcom back in the day. I don't know who That's that is. That's Neil Patrick Harris. never even seen that face, nothing. Doogie's gay now. Damn. No, but, no, Patrick Harris is gay, not Doogie. Well, same different. <laughs> he was a kid, a wonder kid. That was a doctor. Really? Yeah, 16-year-old doctor. Wow. Does that mean that now when they tell Wait, you... Wait, what about that other 16-year-old doctor that ooh, you gave ooh. the donkey today to? He was a fit oh, he guy. He wasn't a real doctor. He's talking about Malachi Love, <laughs> whatever Malachi's his name is. Yeah. 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 Dr. Love wasn't no real doctor. I mean, doctor. you know what I'm saying? Dr. Love. I respect the hustle, though. Yeah, I respect the he hustle, too. Yeah. Of people. You know what I'm saying? He was committed to Abs- that. Absolutely. He was into it. All right. Now, when All Nelson right, tells you a time, a time to be here now, you're going to think it's an hour later than it's supposed to be? I mean, I got to respect it, man. It, it is what it is. I ain't never mad at somebody lying to me about time because <laughs> my teachers always tell me if you're on time, you're late. You're late. Yep. So right. I like to get here before time. She got that from Malcolm X, by the way. Okay, That's bet. A fact. I ain't never, you see? Yes. You learn something new every day. Thank you, Charlemagne. So you learned about Doogie Howser and a nice Malcolm X quote. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah. All right. It was well, a good day. Breakfast club. <laughs> and I got some good books too. You know what I'm saying? That's it. What a day. It's yeah, Joey Badass. <laughs> Peace. The Breakfast Club. Every weekday morning. Tune in.